the Earth's magnetic field reverses more often, and now we know why. This is on The Conversation by Professor of Paleomagnetism, University of Liverpool, Andrew Biggin, and Mark Hanslow, Research Fellow, Lancaster Environment Center, Lancaster University. Underneath our feet, deep down in the Earth, liquid iron is producing the magnetic field that we all take for granted. But every now and then the magnetic field reverses or flips its polarity. That was once magnetic north becomes south and vice versa. When these reversals take place and why they do so has been an enduring mystery. Now this is frightening actually, to me it is frightening. Now let's go on with this to see why that's happening. But our new research shows that there is a relationship between the Earth's magnetic field and the amount of ancient ocean floor that descends from the surface into the hot, docile mantle beneath through a process known as subduction. Now I wonder if this has anything to do with the movement of the magnetic, magnetic North Pole. The video before this one has, has something to say about that. And also the fact that we've, have, we've had so many earthquakes and volcanic eruptions this past year and still going on. For example, a swarm of earthquakes, 81 up to now, significant earthquakes in the Alaska region. Now, not only where they have the subduction zone, now, not only uh, might this relationship give us some idea of how many magnetic field reverses occur over any time period, it also enables us to understand how quickly the mantle, that's the layer of earth beneath, between the crust and the cores, moves. This is important because mantle motion is ultimately responsible for producing nearly all earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountain chains. Hot plumes from the mantle may also be responsible for Earth's major extinctions. If we can understand the workings of the mantle, we can have better insight into long timescale geological phenomena that affect our species. Not that there's, in my, this is my comment, not that there's much that we can do about that. Graveyard for surface plates. Plate tectonics is a scientific theory that the plate's lithosphere that's the cold uppermost mantle and the crust, which are welded together, is split into seven large plates and many small ones. The plates are formed by volcanism at the mid-ocean spreading center, such as the Mid-Atlantic Rift. Once at the surface, new lithosphere moves away from spreading centers and cools over millions of years. Over time, it becomes denser, and eventually the lithosphere since back, six, sinks back into the hot mantle at subduction zones, such as those found just west of the Andes. Another subduction zone is uh, the Juan de Fuca Plate, the Pacific Plate going under the North American Plate, and also that junction in, in uh, Alaska. Now, at this point, the plates disappear from the Earth's surface, but seismologists claim that colder slabs of lithosphere can be identified deep down in the mantle up to 300 mi million years after they have disappeared from the surface. The slabs of lithosphere have descended thousands of kilometers downward, displacing vast volumes of solid mantle in the process and forming a slab graveyard just above the much denser liquid iron outer core. And this means that the slabs of lithosphere descend as much as 2,000 890 kilometers, and it is there that they might influence the motion of iron liquid in the underlying core. But there is strong disagreement regarding the amount of time it takes for the slabs to sink down far enough to affect the core. Estimates have ranged for around 50 million to 250 million years. Fossilized magnetic activity of the core the Earth's magnetic field has persisted for billions of years, though its polarity has flipped many times. Because the magnetic field leaves a fossilized magnetism, magnetization in many rocks that form at Earth's surface, we have a paleomagnetic record of how Earth's magnetic field has changed over time. We also know that the rate with which these reversals happen has varied strongly. 
they occur at a faster rate over the past million years than in the previous 100 million years, and it's still a great mystery why the rate of polarity change is so varied. Earth's magnetic field is generated in the liquid outer core by a dynamo process that converts the motion of electrically conductive fluid into electromagnetic energy. This process is similar in principle to the dynamo used in a wind-up torch. So our Earth's core is sensitive to the rate at which it loses heat to the overlying cooler mantle. When cold subduction slabs arrive in the lower mantle, they increase the rate of core cooling and so speed up the motion of the liquid iron within it. According to numerical models, this extra motion should cause the rate of reversals to also increase. So perhaps the magnetic field reversal rate increases when more subduction happens at the surface? That's a question. If so, then we would expect to measure a time delay between the subduction and changes in reversal rate because the slabs have to sink a long way before they affect the core. Our study aimed to measure just how quickly slabs sink through the viscous solid mantle. To do so, we examined rocks of both subduction flux, that's an area of cold slabs entering the mantle, and geomagnetic polarity reversal rate, how often flips occur. The subduction flux data covered the past 410 million years from a global model of plate tectonics. The reversal rate data came from a new compilation back to 500 million years. We also used a global compilation of the ages of grains of zircon, a type of mineral appearing in igneous rocks that form above subduction slabs, which is also likely to vary with subduction flux. When we subjected a, the subduction flux, magnetic reversal rate data, and zircon age frequency to statistical analysis, we found a significant correlation associated with a surface-to-core time delay of around 120 million years. So it's likely that the Earth's magnetic field is affected by the sinking slabs of lithosphere. The correlation is not perfect, and even if it were, it would not necessarily imply causation, since a number of potentially confounding factors may be in play. But it is an encouraging result because it fits with our expectation of how the deep earth works and gives us a time delay that sits somewhere in the middle of previous estimates. It also makes a unique prediction that because subduction flux decreases over the past 120 million years, reversal rate is predicted to lessen in the next 120 million years. Well, that's nice to know. What happens now, though? Now, finishing up with this article, the challenge now is to find how fast the mantle actually does move. If we can understand the ancient and deep processes that are responsible for earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountains, we can have better insight into geological phenomena that affect our everyday lives. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.